In this film, I will present you with an overview of a multimodal interactive system and what we consider to be a multimodal system, that is, what are modalities, what are interaction modalities, and how they can be categorized. Let's start with an overview of such a system. On the left-hand side, you see different devices which can be used to access information through different physical channels and to serve as an input to the input interface. The input interface is actually the mechanism behind these devices which makes use of that information and translates it into semantically meaningful pieces of information which can be processed by an interactive system. In the middle of the picture you see the multimodal processing units and on the right hand side you see different output interfaces, them again being connected to different devices giving access to the physical channel. And on the other side of this physical channel, you have to imagine the human user of such a multimodal interactive system. In this chapter, we would like to give you an overview of different input interfaces, interfaces to access information from different physical input channels. On the top layer here, you see automatic speech recognition, which makes use of a microphone signal, perhaps integrated into a telephone, and then provides a transcription of that microphone signal into written text. And this written text needs to be interpreted, and this is the task of a natural language processing unit. That natural language processing unit can, of course, also operate on the basis of written text or typed text uh, put in, for example, with a keyboard. Then you have different modules which can make use of camera information. For example, a module for face location and tracking of faces. And if you have recognized the face, you can also recognize where a person looks to, that is the gaze. So there are mechanisms for gaze tracking. You can even concentrate on the lips and do something which we call lip reading. And the lip reading recognition may help the automatic speech recognition in order to make use of the auditory and the visual information, as we will see later in this chapter. Uh, cameras can also use to record gestures of humans, but we can also, of course, use other sensor information, for example, coming from a mouse or a data globe or a touch-sensitive screen or an input pen or stylus. Uh, and this can be used to make 3D gestures, which are then recognized by the system, 2D gestures on a screen, for example, and even things like handwriting can be recognized on that basis. The information coming through these different channels needs to be fused or merged in order to be usable by the interactive system. And this is the task of the multimodal data fusion component. This fusion component gives the semantic meaning of the input to a central unit which is called the dialogue manager or interaction manager. And this manager is responsible for the behavior of the system towards the user. It may make use of a multimodal data storage, uh, remembering what type of information has been provided at which time by which modality. And of course, it should also have access to task or to databases which help the functionality of the system. So, for example, it can be a booking system or a reservation system or a transaction system. And this uh, interaction manager or dialogue manager needs to have access to it. Then the dialogue manager has to provide output information to the user, either requesting new information or generating new interaction behavior or giving the desired response to the user. And the response needs to be generated first on an abstract level, on a conceptual level, and then uh, distributed to the different output interfaces. This process is called the fission of information, so the opposite of the fusion process. Uh, the fission distributes the information to different output interfaces, which may be uh, using graphics. Uh, for example, you have a graphic component, graphic generation component, or it can be natural language, which is then either displayed to the user or transformed into an acoustic signal with the help of speech synthesis. Uh, you can also generate other audible sounds, uh, auditory icons or earcons, for example, which are then uh, displayed to the user via the loudspeaker. And you can also generate haptic signals, which can be perceived, for example, using devices like air jets, air pockets, air rings, or force fe feedback devices like joysticks. All these output information may then be transformed to the transferred to the user. 
Uh, the question in such a multimodal interactive system is which modalities should we use for which purpose? And in order to address this point um, and to provide you with more information on the input modalities, I would first like to discuss some terms which are related to the use of different media for interaction and that is actually what we define as a modality. Um, in psychology, the modality is usually defined on a perceptual level. That is, we have a visual modality, an auditory modality, a haptic modality, which consists of the surface sensitivity, the tactile sensitivity, a deep sensitivity of the skin, the temperature, and the pain sensitivity. And then we have the olfactory perception, the gustatory perception, and the vestibular perception. Um, in a technical system, these uh, Perceptual modalities do not have necessarily one counterpart. For example, for processing visual information, you may use a camera, but also a pen to provide information uh, into a system using, for example, 3D gestures or face recognition or lip reading or text or handwriting recognition. You may use a microphone in order to provide a signal which then can be recognized by a speech recognizer. Or you might use a touch screen for uh, putting in 2D gestures into a system provided by a 2D gesture recognition. So you see that there is no one-to-one -one mapping between the human capabilities in terms of modalities, perceptual modalities, and the system equivalence to them. Actually. Uh, from an information theory point of view and from an inf informatic and media science um, point of view, we usually talk about the modality as the use of a particular physical channel um, within our actions in order to provide information to a system. And this can be done in different ways, for example, by uh, doing gestures, by exercising a certain posture towards the system, so I'm moving my body towards the system. I can uh, use my gaze, that is where I'm looking to, in order to provide information to a system. I can use voice, which is then recognized by the system, or speech. I can make use of the available space. I can use uh, different turn-taking mechanisms during the interaction, for example, interrupting the system, uh, talking over the system, and so on. I can express emotions. And I can also try to display social relationship. Uh, these are actions which are normal human actions, which we use in our human-human communication scenario. And there are, in addition to that, device-related actions that are actions which I display towards the system because there is a physical device like a keyboard which I'm typing on in order to provide information to a system. Um, there have been different attempts to classify the interaction modalities with multimodal interactive systems. The most popular of these schemes was developed by Nietzsche Ole Bernsen uh, and collaborators in 1999. He distinguishes between linguistic versus non-linguistic modalities, for example speech, analog versus non-analog modalities, arbitrary versus non-arbitrary modalities, graphical versus acoustic versus haptic modalities, and static versus dynamic or dynamically changing modalities. And each of these uh, modality classes have certain characteristics. Niels Ole Bernsen calls them modality properties, which might be helpful for the system designer to decide on which interaction modalities to choose. For example, an acoustic modality has the property that it is omnidirectional. So you would not like to use the acoustic input modality for providing your secret pin code to a banking ATM machine. Um, and these are, this is just one example of certain characteristics which result from this classification of modalities uh, and which can be helpful in order to decide which interaction modality is helpful, is useful, is appropriate for a certain system.